we're very fortunate to have with us today Teresa Castellanos, uh, Salvador Bustamante, uh, otherwise known as Chava, uh, Silvia Lopez, and uh, Adrián Tepejua Vargas, the, the producer and director of the film. And uh, first, uh, let me introduce uh, Teresa. So Teresa Castellanos has worked with the, the diversity of immigrant communities for over 30 years. She began her career as a labor organizer with Justice for Janitors, the Health Workers Union, um, and Catholic Charities uh, Immigration Program, uh, leading its uh, citizenship efforts in the mid-1990s. For 24 years, uh, she has been a guiding force behind Santa Clara County's immigrant in integration programs. She also serves as a, as a trustee on the, on the board of the, uh, the San Jose Unified School District. And she was one of the co-organizers of the May Day March in 2006. Uh, Chava Bustamante uh, has, has worked to promote labor and human, labor, human and civil rights for Latino immigrants in California for over 40 years. He has worked as a labor organizer and community leader with the United Farm Workers Union, California Rural Legal Assistance, the Mental Health Advocacy Project, the Economic and Social Opportunities uh, Project, the Catholic Charities Legalization Project, SEIU Local 1877, Justice for Janitors Campaign, and, and many others. Before retiring in February of this year, Chava contributed his time working as a full-time volunteer executive director for Latinos United for a New America otherwise known as Luna, which he helped found. He was, he was also one of the co-organizers of the May Day March. Silvia Lopez is an immigrant from Oaxaca, Mexico, a member of Centro Azatlan Chicomostoc in San Jose. She is a domestic worker. For many years, she cleaned houses with, with, with which as a single mother, she had been able to raise her daughters. 15 years ago, she started to get involved in the domestic workers movement to win laws to protect them. Five years ago, she started working as an organizer for domestic workers in the Bay Area because it is important that the work of immigrants is recognized and they're given fair value and treatment. Finally, uh, Adrián Tepejua Vargas, uh, has been an artist and cultural worker in Santa Clara Valley for over 40 years. He is recognized as one of the, of the top 10 influential Chicano artists in Silicon Valley. He is co-founder of the Mexican Heritage Plaza and in 2004 received the Director's Award from the California Arts Council for his years of con a contribution in the arts and for the people of California. So. Welcome to our, our panel and uh, take it away. <laughs> and you can, uh, the panel should, of course, unmute, unmute yourselves and uh, feel free to discuss. I think uh, the, uh, it'd be good if Adrian, who was the um, producer of the film and the uh, director, if you can uh, start, Adrian, giving us your perspective. Um, uh, buenas noches, bienvenidos, and um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Sharat and uh, all the people working on the May 1st program, and it's going to happen um, this um, uh, this uh, coming uh, week, and, um, and making a part of that, uh, this uh, for the occasion of the 15th anniversary of, of, of that Grand March that we had in 2006, and the showing of... Uh, the, the film, and Gigante Awakens, and um, um, I guess uh, we, we spend a little bit of time describing what we did with that project, or we're just uh, kind of generally introducing ourselves again. Uh, but what's everybody's, como prefieren continuar, quieren escuchar un poquito como fue el proceso, the process of deciding to do this film? Um, what were the elements that led up to me deciding 
um, to uh, make uh, quite a bit of a, an effort and sacrifice, so to speak, uh, because uh, after working uh, 20 years for the county, después de trabajar 20 años para la agencia de servicios sociales en, en el condado, este, uh, pues yo salí a apoyar la marcha, uh, the, the, the pre, what do you call the pre-march march, um, the one that was held in April, uh, I think it was April 10th, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was. Yeah. It was one uh, March 10th, and then, and then yeah, April 10th. And then. Right. And um, that had a turnout of about 35,000 people, I understand. And wow, that, up to that date, that, that up to the April 10th of 2006, that was the biggest march that San Jose ever had um, for anything, including lots of marches that I was part of. Uh, Muchas marchas que yo tomé parte durante los 60, 70, 80 y para arriba. Y bueno, eh, eh, al ver yo eso, uh, you know, upon seeing that um, there had this, been this tremendous uh, uh, turnout, um, um, I knew that uh, May 1st, sentí que el primero de mayo esa marcha iba a ser uh, muy, muy histórica. Y pues yo como, digamos, um, representante de la, um, de la industria artística, cultural, este, como trabajador cultural, um, yo hice ciertos uh, arreglos in order to be able to retire from my county job, uh, cash in a little bit of deferred comp and finance the film because it was not financed by any grant um, from the government or agencies or anything like that. We had some individual contributors Pero este, costó bastante dinero hacer esta uh, documentación. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, uh, and it did, it did turn out to be a very historical film. And that is why when I started the, um, uh, the design for the, how we would cover the narrative, because oh. es como, un, fue una película donde nomás eh, no había plot, no había personajes, el pueblo era el personaje. Y nomás teníamos unas preguntas que estábamos preguntándole a todos, ¿verdad? And the, the, the field producer was just asking the questions. Y luego, eh, eh, for the footage that we, que, que vimos, eh, todo este, decidimos, no, aquí sí hay algo histórico y tenemos que poner esfuerzo para establecer esta como el inicio. Because I was originally getting footage, believe it or not, for another film, Impacto, that I was working on since uh, uh, 2010, I think. Uh, uh, no, 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 2004, uh, Impacto, which was going to be the history or documentation of the Chicano movement in San Jose. Well, there was so much footage, hubo tanto kilometraje de, 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 de película, uh, de, de visuals, uh, uh, spectacle, este, música, bueno, todo lo que también and I want to acknowledge my associate producer, and Mio Productions, este, uh, Jose Bernardo Herrera, who really did all the technical work um, and um, uh, set his crew out there and um, placed them in dangerous places where they had to get that shot. Y este, no, se aventaron, se aventaron uh, todo el crew. Y este, después entró la edición, um, what do we keep, what do we, uh, uh, you know, take out what do we add, and of course we made it bilingual, este con um, you know subtitles, lo más posible, y, uh, you know integramos música internacional, um, from Manu Chao and um, Ricardo Arjona, este los este uh, Tigres del Norte, Santana, you know our own um, conjunto libertad uh, music and. Uh, I want to say at this moment that uh, one of our most outspoken persons in the band and, and that came out in this film is one of the most outspoken persons uh, is Noé Montoya, who was our requintero um, in the band, um, which, by the way, we did a, 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 a CD based on all the music that, that went on there. And desafortunadamente, este, he caught uh, COVID-19 in November last year, and um, he passed away. And so, um, you know, it's it's kind of hard seeing him talk in the dynamic way that he was able to express himself 
sing, and he was just an all-round um, uh, cultural icon. The Teatro Campesino, Teatro de la Gente, um, years and years of experience, and uh, was such a contributor also to the film just by the very words that he spoke and um, and the music that he played. So um, I uh, I'm you know really uh, heavy-hearted um, in uh, experiencing all of that, Morita. Um, and um, some other friends also, uh, and que les ha tocado esta enfermedad o por otra enfermedad ya no están con nosotros, you know, 15 years later. And um, I think we have to um, también uh, honor those that uh, were around and uh, fought with the struggle. Sal Alvarez uh, was another one and that, that comes to mind. And um, so uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Um, Cualquieras preguntas que me puedan eh, preguntar, si quieren curiosidad, curiosidad, if you're curious about any part of why you did this, why we chose that scene, etc. Y también yo tengo preguntas uh, para los organizadores. Mm -hmm. So um, that's my um, introduction, mi presentación, este, que para mí este, definitivamente me cambió todo, toda mi vida. Este chava reemplazó mi estuche de mi guitarra, este que se quebró en un troco que iba así en la junta del the, 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 the April 10th meeting. Uh, we got a ride back with a wild truck truck driver that had us all bunched up together, and I broke two ribs on the way back to uh, to uh, King and Story. Pero eso es, 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 es parte de la historia también, ¿verdad? Es eh, parte de la jubilación de haber estado en ese momento en parte también, part of also the energy and the jubilation that we needed to keep to have a good strong march, una marcha digna y fuerte como estuvo el primero de mayo um, aquí en San José. And interestingly enough, um, while we were about 200,000, maybe some people say we were 250,000 aquí en San Jose. En otros lugares, hubo más, Chicago, LA. Este, pero lo curioso es que nadie lo filmó y documentó históricamente en esos ambientes con este tipo de, de approach, ¿verdad? De, como se dice, cinema verité, quiere decir cinema verité. Eh, eh, es cinema de la verdad, cinema en el momento, cinema sin planificación, digamos, de, de, de mucho, y la improvisación y la reacción de la gente en el momento, que es la riqueza de este documental, es the richness of the, the consciousness, the awareness, the every bit of expression that the people um, had on that day, and, and the value of all that. And um, I'm hoping that uh, um, this film uh, is able to go places todavía as a, a matter of record of, of, of what we did. It's the, all of us is on uh, the first uh, May 1st, 2006, uh, March and April. Great. Great. I, I, want, I would like um, Teresa and, and Chava to maybe tell us something about about how they became involved and, and why they they uh, chose to organize in 2006 and why they chose May 1st. Yeah. Well, just a little reminder is that there had been some anti-immigrant legislation that had passed through Congress really quickly in November and December of the previous year. And it was going really fast through Congress. Um, it ended up not being implemented because of the, the nationwide marches. It got implemented partially in Arizona because there was this big plan. And if it didn't get implemented nationwide, it got implemented in the state of Arizona. So we knew that there was a tension in the community and the first big march was actually the Cesar Chavez March um, where the immigrant community was convening to march about the anti-immigrant sentiment. It merged with the annual Cesar Chavez March and it became a 10,000 person march. So we knew that there was a sense in the community that something was happening. And then there was a national call that came out of Chicago that said, let's do something on, on April 10th. 
And then there was a follow-up call that said do something on May 1st. I think locally, we had been organizing in the immigrant rights movement. So we were connected to these national networks. But the beauty of that national movement, because we were a local expression of a national movement as Adriana already mentioned, um, was that the immigrant community reclaimed May Day. We did not celebrate May Day as a country. We did not celebrate May Day as a city. And because of the immigrant rights movement nationwide, we began reclaiming May Day. And May Day is about workers' rights. It's about a movement that started in Chicago in which all the leaders were executed for organizing for workers' rights. And it was also the immigrant community. So it was like a full circle of immigrants claiming their rights in this country. Um, and, and the beauty of it was that the immigrant community brought the, their knowledge from their native countries. So whether you were Mexicano, Salvadoreño, Filipino, you had your own traditions of May Day. Although we don't celebrate it here, the world does celebrate May Day in recognition to what happened to the workers here in the United States. So to, to remember that beauty, to remember that knowledge that we have that's genetic, to remember the courage that people took, because I mean, people did not go to work, they went to that march. And I don't think we were the biggest march, but we were the biggest march compared to the percentage of the population. Because obviously LA County had like a million people march, but LA County is like three or four times bigger than Santa Clara County. Um, and so that was the beauty of our community knowledge and the, and the beauty of our collective strength when we come together. Chala. I know, thank you, Terry. Um, and um, good evening, everyone. Um, first, I wanna thank uh, Sharat for um, putting this um, event together uh, and for um, inviting us to be, in, uh, to be part of the panel. I also would like to recognize Adrian for his uh, vision, because like he said, this was not something that was planned, but he somehow had the vision and uh, uh, that something big was gonna happen on uh, May Day and uh, put the, um, uh, all the elements together so he could capture this uh, very important document uh, that is going to be there for posterity. And um, but I hope that uh, you know in years to come, our grandchildren will uh, look at it and uh, learn that uh, um, on May uh, Day 2006, um, all uh, almost all of the people who are in this uh, in this panel and this uh, event, and plus uh, 200,000 more people, we went out and, and marched and, and made history. Uh, for me, it started, uh, I was working as an organizer with um, SEIU Local 1877 at the time. And uh, I remember going to a meeting um, that we had in Los Angeles at the Fed, uh, uh, at the um, Labor Federation. And then um, this um, guy, Arturo um, um, Lopez, I think, I don't remember his last name, um, from Chicago. Uh, came to show what they had done in, um, earlier in February in Chicago. And uh, it was incredible, the numbers of people marching in the streets uh, and just the spirit. And uh, I remember uh, brother Mike Garcia, who, uh, you know, um, um, you know, who already died, uh, that uh, he said, uh, what do you think, Chava? Do you think that uh, you guys could do something like this in San Jose on uh, April 10th? And uh, it was a big challenge because, you know, just seeing the numbers in that march in the film that uh, uh, Arturo um, showed to us, uh, I said, you know, we'll, we'll do our best. And so I came to San Jose and, uh, uh, you know, I started calling on uh, uh, all the people that I knew, uh, uh, Teresa, uh, Richard Hubbs, uh, Patricia Diaz, uh, Cindy Avitia, who um, also, you know, um, um, is no longer with us. Uh, I, and, uh, and you saw the list uh, uh, at the end of the film, right? Uh, this was something that uh, 
this was a um, uh, a common effort by everyone, um, you know, who was uh, an activist in San Jose. And so um, we started working and, um, you know, um, we um, got everything together, did all the preparations and uh, um, April 10th came and, uh, you know, to our surprise, you know, 30,000 people uh, went out. And so we, said, we could not believe what, uh, what had happened. And, uh, you know, here I want to say that uh, this is not something that we can claim credit for because, uh, uh, you know, uh, not everyone on that list has the capacity to actually mobilize uh, 30,000 people, right? And so it was the people who were already, uh, you know, um, um, in, um, in the mood uh, that, uh, you know, they were not going to... Uh, allowed the Congress to uh, turn them into criminals. Um, Teresa was mentioning uh, HR 30, uh, 4437, uh, 37, I think it was, uh, that was already approved in Congress, you know, it uh, uh, got defeat ultimately uh, in the Senate, right, uh, a few months after the uh, um, May, uh, May Day. But, uh, uh, you know, then we said, okay, so there was a call to organize something for uh, May Day. And, uh, and we, again, the coalition, you know, uh, ac accepted the challenge and, uh, and, and work on it. And uh, it just, um, it is uh, incredible. I mean, you know, um, I think that the, uh, the merit that the coalition had was to create the, um, what do you say, the, the Marco, the, um, uh, the framework for this march to happen and to happen in, a, uh, in an effective way, in a nonviolent way, uh, with no incidents with the police. Uh, you know, uh, how can you uh, control 200,000 people in the streets, right? You saw the, uh, the level of emotion that people uh, showed in, in, in the march. And, uh, so um, just just watching the film right now, you know, um, all those uh, emotions, uh, you know, I come like, you know, in waves uh, inside me. Uh, I haven't seen the film in 15 years. Uh, this is the first time that I always see it in, uh, in 15 years. And, uh, you know, my skin is, you know, the um, chinita, la piel, no, este de la emoción, pero it's just, uh, um, you know, I thank uh, life and uh, my friends, uh, the people who participated in the uh, putting together that event uh, for, uh, you know, allowing all of us to uh, be part of something that uh, um, I don't think that we will ever, be, <laughs> it, it will happen again in our lifetime. Uh, so this is, you know, once, one of those uh, once in a lifetime events that uh, we had the opportunity to, to participate. So, Silvia, ¿quieres hablar un poquito de tu perspectiva? Bueno, antes que nada, gracias por invitarme a estar presente en este momento que, que como dijo usted hace un momento, se hace la piel chinita, ¿verdad? De recordar eh, esos momentos de la marcha, ¿verdad? De, de, de ese despertar de ese gigante que ahora... Al tener en mente esas imágenes, me siento así todavía todo temblar de la emoción, este, porque fue la solidaridad, el romper esas barreras, romper esos tabús, eh, fue solo una voz que se escuchó ese día, ¿verdad? Sin divisiones, la unidad que nos llevó a, a levantar la voz, a tomar nuestras calles, porque decimos eh, siempre las calles son del pueblo, pero nunca estábamos allí. Entonces, día, las calles fueron del pueblo y van a seguir siendo del pueblo, ¿verdad? Que eh, exigiendo lo que realmente hemos ganado con nuestro trabajo, con nuestro esfuerzo, ¿verdad? Así es que nosotros no hemos pedido venir en este, en este lugar. Las circunstancias y el mismo sistema nos ha hecho emigrar, nos ha hecho dejar nuestras tierras, dejar nuestra gente, dejar nuestras familias y venir a, a trabajar, a regar con nuestro sudor los campos. ¿verdad? En mi caso, limpiar casas, cuidar niños. Como trabajadores tenemos ese valor, tenemos eh, 
tenemos también ese decir, merecemos tener una reforma migratoria, ¿verdad? Y ese día se demostró saliendo todos a, la, a, los, a las calles, ¿no? Levantar esa, esa multitud que en un momento decimos, bueno, tal vez no somos tantos inmigrantes, tal vez no somos tantos trabajadores y vimos que somos una fuerza muy poderosa, que cuando lo queremos podemos hacer muchas cosas, muchos cambios, ¿verdad? Escuchando siempre las mismas mentiras que nos dicen nuestros, nuestros representantes, nuestros representantes que los ponemos ahí para hacer cambios en la comunidad, pero que sin embargo siempre mienten, ¿no? Se olvidan de la gente que los llevó ahí, del pueblo que los puso en ese lugar, ¿verdad? Se olvidan del trabajo que hemos sacado adelante en este país, levantado la economía, porque somos parte de toda esa economía. Entonces, esa voz escuchó ese día, esa voz tan fuerte y poderosa que tengo la esperanza todavía de poder escucharla, porque creo que todavía podemos levantar a un gigante mucho más grande, ¿verdad? Podemos levantar todavía a todas esas que no se concientizaron ese día. Para mí fue algo bien importante. Estoy cumpliendo 15 años también yo en, en el movimiento. Empezaba a asistir yo a a la organización en la que ahora estoy y yo llegué en el mes de marzo a la organización ¿no? y llegar a esa marcha y me dije wow ese momento fue donde me concienticé donde realmente vi esa mirada de esperanza en todos vi esa fuerza que quedé enamorada de ese movimiento quedé enamorada de ese de ese momento verdad entonces dije, yo quiero ser parte de esos cambios, quiero ser parte de esa, de esa voz que nunca se apague, que siempre quede eh, recordando que estamos aquí. Y pues hasta ahorita sigo en el movimiento, ¿verdad? Desde ese momento me quedé escuchando, aprendiendo, saber qué son las necesidades de mi comunidad, saber cómo poder ayudarlas. Ahora soy parte de ese movimiento en las trabajadoras del hogar porque... Somos una fuente muy importante y que al igual que nuestros hermanos campesinos, no tenemos leyes, no tenemos eh, protecciones. Entonces, yo creo que es importante que se escuche esa voz, que se escuche nuevamente el despertar, que se escuche nuevamente el decir, estamos aquí y no nos vamos, ¿verdad? Aquí estamos y no nos vamos, ¿verdad? Y, y pues que retumben en todos los cuatro rumbos, el, sí se puede y que vamos a poder lograr muchas cosas con nuestra unidad, con nuestra solidaridad. En una sola voz vamos a poder buscar esa, encontrar esa justicia y esa libertad que necesitamos. Ya basta de los abusos que tenemos como inmigrantes, ya basta de los abusos que tenemos como trabajadores. Tenemos que ser valorados, ¿no? tenemos que darles a demostrar de que nuestro trabajo como personas, como seres humanos, valemos mucho y que no somos diferentes a nadie, ¿verdad? que tenemos ese espacio aquí para poder nosotros hacer también los cambios juntos con la comunidad. Así es que siempre me gusta el decir sí se puede porque, porque sí se puede, ¿verdad? Entonces vamos a seguir adelante y muchas gracias nuevamente por darme la oportunidad de, re, de volver a vivir esos momentos ahorita y ya sentía las ganas de salir y ir a la calle y ir a gritar y si se puede, digamos, ¿verdad? levantar a muchas personas más porque todavía queda esa, ese, este, ese frito, pero ese frito no de, no, de, no de mal, sino ese frito de, de seguir adelante, de seguir buscando lo que nuestra comunidad merece. Entonces, creo que es algo que ha quedado plasmado en estos, en este documental y que nuestras nuevas generaciones lo miren y que vean y se concienticen de, de que como inmigrantes sin documentos pudimos hacerlo, ¿verdad? Y vamos a poder hacer, seguir haciéndolo con papeles y sin miedo o sin miedo y sin papeles, pero lo vamos a seguir haciendo, ¿verdad? Así es que gracias nuevamente por recordar estos bellos momentos y, y tenerlo en, en, en este momento aquí. Gracias. So, 
I'm going to provide a really quick translation, a summary of what she said. Sorry, hablé so, mucho. Sí, sí, no hay problema, lo escribí. So Silvia said, thank you for the invitation. Uh, thank you for the memory and the emotion, um, the a memory and motion of solidarity. We were one single voice that was raised. Uh, the streets belong to the people with our work and with our effort. Um, we have been forced to live, leave our countries, leave our families, and we come here to work in the fields. We come to work here in the jobs. We deserve immigration reform. Um, we think we're alone, but this documentation, this documentary reminded us that we are powerful when we come together. Um, many times the electeds forget what we contribute and what we bring to the table. And the importance of this documentary is it reminds us of our power. Uh, we are part of the community. Um, our voice was strong and our voice was peaceful. Um, and I had just started organizing in March of that year. And then I came up into this moment um, and I realized that I wanted to be a part of that voice. Um, and in this movement, I realized that I had a voice um, because many times as domestic workers and as farm workers, uh, we are not recognized for our contributions. Um, and, and I fell in love with this movement. I fell in love with this cause. Um, and there is still a lot to be done. And if we come together, if we remember who we are, um, if we are united and we can express our solidarity, we can have justice and liberation. So that was the summary that I captured. Gracias, Silvia. Hablo muy, muy bonito. Gracias. Thank you. Uh, de, de, de acuerdo, yeah, yeah, palabras, palabras muy, muy eh, sinceras y sobre todo basadas en la experiencia y, y en el compromiso. Eh, este, pero quisiera que aclarara Silvia, ¿en dónde marchó usted? Marché en Oakland, pero creo que en ese momento la esencia se encontraba en todos, todas partes, así es que éramos una solo. Yo creo que éramos uno solo y no puedo decir exclusivamente Oakland, exclusivamente San José. Yo creo que estábamos tan poderosos en una sola voz que, que no, lo, no nos confundían, ¿verdad? Éramos uno solo. Ya yeah, estoy de acuerdo. So Adrián asked her, where did she march? In, when was it? 2006. And she said, Oakland. But let's not think that we were separate. We were one big, huge voice coming together in solidarity with each other. And I would add that I think even though this was in its majority an immigrant rights march, um, it was also a part of the Chicano movement. It was also part of the many movements of many communities and, and part of the tradition of mobilizing for justice. Because I think in this country, we forget that we come from that legacy and we come from that heritage. And we always think that we're the first and that's not true. I mean what this count that what this nation was founded on for rich white men to be the only ones to vote the u.s history has been every community fighting to be included and so we come from a rich legacy of mobilizing and organizing and showing solidarity and i think it was a, a historical moment in which we bridged native communities and i mean native u.s foreign communities with immigrant communities and so I think that was also the power of that march because I mean, I don't think we had all of the undocumented community marched. We had the undocumented community and the allies marching. Because if we had had only the undocumented community, we would have moved 200,000 people. But I think it was the combination of many communities that came together. Um, and obviously there was, there was many needs that were being, um, organized around when people came together and i think in the tradition because we've kept this tradition going for 15 years not as big 
but we've kept this tradition growing and it's expanded to housing issues it's expanded to workers protections it's expanded to the many issues that we face as workers in silicon valley and, and the fact that this took place in silicon valley the new economy the economy that didn't need unions the economy that has run the economic engine of this country for at least the last 20 years and and that had made the immigrant community invisible and so that that took place and that claiming of space took place was really important and obviously the fact that Adrian had the the foresight to document it so that we can remember what we did because as I was watching I was like whoa we were chingones um we got a lot done in a really short time period and I remember that when we first came together we spent so much time fighting over what what the banner was going to say and what the rat was going to be and who was going to speak that we really like got only like two weeks to actually put the whole thing together and obviously we were not the creators of this there was a national movement but we were a channel that gave people a route and a platform to be able to express all that they were um and people brought out their art and people brought out their banners and people brought out their song and, and the beauty of when Sal Alvarez says, well, marching is also a prayer. And I think that's also the feeling that we had as we were marching in that march was that, wow, look at our energy and look at our spiritual force and our moral force when we can come together. And that's the beauty of remembering where we were uh, in that march that took place here in San Jose. And I think, you know, we've had other big marches, but we forget. And so I think the Women's March has done a lot, but I think they got 35,000 at the most. They never got 200,000, but people forget. But we have the proof, we have the pictures. And actually we had demog a demographer look at the pictures. And from what they looked at, they calculated like 300,000 that had actually marched. And actually we ended the march and people were still leaving Story and King. So the march never truly ended. And then when they saw people coming back, they stopped marching. But we had done the whole march, finished the whole program, and people were still leaving Story and King. And we, um, and so people turned back because they had to walk back too. That was a big long march, at least five miles. Um, and so, um, and, and it comes from the tradition of the Chicano movement, of Native American movements, of being able to do long march to make claims of justice and claim space. Uh, Wendy yeah. um, wants to say something. I just want to add something quickly to what you said, Teresa. I mean, one of the things and one of the fears after uh, that I had after the march, we had a meeting to do an evaluation. And uh, one of the things that I saw in this march is that uh, um, hundreds of um, young leaders, um, you know, um, came to this uh, um March and uh, and participated and um, my uh, you know thinking back then was you know I hope that this is not just uh, the heat of the moment right that these uh, young people will continue to be uh, involved and to and to be active and 15 years later you know people like Quetzal Gomez and all the the tradition of organizing the uh, uh, May Day March continues, you know, after 15 years. And uh, the leaders now are not the viejitos like Chava and, uh, you know, Adrian. Uh, Teresa is not, you know, in that category, but uh, it's, it's young people. Oh, right? lucky you, you just saved yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's very rewarding to see that the tradition continues and that the young leaders that emerged back then, uh, they continue to be active. So, Wendy, adelante, por favor. Uh, unmute yourself, please. Wendy. Thank you. Um, first, I just want to say how much I appreciated the film. I, I saw the, the, the note from Teresa kind of late, and so I didn't get on to see all of it. I hope it will be shown again um, before long. Um, but I, I appreciated what I did see of it and um, all of your wonderful remarks. And it's absolutely true that this was something that changed people's spirit, their, their image of themselves um, and as a people and as individuals both. 
And it was something that was in the air. I mean, it was on Spanish speaking radio constantly. All of the MCs and everybody was talking about it and, you know, getting people excited about it. It was like it was coming from all directions. And I, I joined the, the committee, um, you know, contributed to some extent anyway, a little bit um, from the um, vantage point of the Dolores Huerta Foundation. But then I, I was teaching at that point at Anladen Elementary. And I had forgotten till, till I saw that, that name on the list of endorsing organizations. And it's not very common that a public elementary school endorses a march. Um, but this was something the majority of the fam families were immigrant families. Um, and, you know, when we started talking about it at the parents organization and with the faculty and everything, everybody was like, we want to go, we want to be there, you know, and the principal was right up for it too. And he says, well, we're just going to stop classes. We won't have classes. All the, all the families are, are free to go. We're carpooling over there. Um, teachers, please take you know, families that, that um, you know, as many people as you can and safely in your cars and any kids whose parents can't go or haven't given permission for their kids to go or whatever, the principal volunteered to watch them in the auditorium. But everybody else who could go went. So it's like the whole parking lot was just filled and it was just en masse to go because it was just so much part of the people. And it was, um, it was a very beautiful experience. I think it changed our school too for the, you know, it gave a, a different spirit there of, um, of unity and um, just what we could create um, that, that kept going in a lot of ways. So. I just want to appreciate everybody who was involved with it. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Mm -hmm. And I would also add that it was the immigrant, that movement that reclaimed the American flag. But because before that, it was only something that the right wing was using. And, and the immigrant movement at different times had used different flags because when we marched in 187 and 227, it was the Mexican flag that you saw everywhere. Um, as people wrap themselves to protect themselves because of why they were being targeted. Um, and then in this March, I mean, it was a national, part of the national dialogue that was taking place of no, we're reclaiming America and we're reclaiming our space. And that was the reason for the American flag. Yeah, there were these, these, uh, these very, very long banners with, with American flags that, that you can, I was one of the photographers who took photos of it from above in, in at the top of City Hall. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it was about immigrants, you know, reclaiming that they are Americans. And, and I think that was that was one of the beauties of, of, of that. I, I wonder whether, you know, they, the, we, we can also talk about the, you know, the, I mean, I think you've already touched on it, many of you, about how the impact of the long lasting impact of this 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 historic moment and how it is how it has you know affected our politics uh, in in the fifteen years since uh, I can say one thing that that uh, you know at, at first it seemed mostly like a like an immigrant rights movement and and unions were not too involved and then as the years went on the the union the unions uh, you know mobilized more and more for May Day and then, and then other communities other than the Latino community would, would join. And so we saw this, this growing diversity of, uh, as people embraced uh, May Day and, 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 and uh, you know, recreated this as an American tradition because May Day after all was born in the United States in 1886. And uh, so it's so suitable that, that it, you know, be a part of uh, Americans, America's political culture, once again. I think it also founded in Santa Clara County, the commitment to the immigrant rights movement, because Santa Clara County had led for quite a while, but continued to lead uh, in terms of investing in immigration legal services, rapid response network, community education, the whole, um, Health insurance for regardless for all children, regardless of documentation, started in California. 
I mean, in Santa Clara County before it spread to California 20 years. So a lot of things were born in Santa Clara County then spread to the rest of the nation. And I think we think of San Francisco as being the center for organizing for the Bay Area, but for the immigrant community, San Jose has been a center for organizing for the immigrant community for a long time. Okay. And a lot of that credit goes to you, Teresa, <laughs> especially in the county. Yeah, I, um, I also want to say that uh, um, uh, this was not a um, very smooth process at times. We had moments where, uh, you know, were very difficult. Uh, I remember a few days before the, uh, the big march, uh, the Catholic Church was, uh, um, um, you know, saying that they were not uh, supporting the march because uh, we were, um, Oh, there was a call for the kids to not to go to school on that day. And uh, um, I remember a conversation with uh, Father John and Sal and, uh, and other people over at the St. Christie's. Uh, and um, we finally had to, you know, made uh, a way, uh, do away with the call for the, uh, for the strike. Uh, and uh, because we thought that it was uh, uh, very, very important for uh, the Catholic Church to, to participate, given the fact that, you know, um, um, the 80 percent of the uh, people who uh, immigrant, uh, Latino immigrants who live in San Jose are Mexicans uh, and Catholic by tradition, um, not having the, uh, the church supporting this, uh, this march was, uh, you know, uh, was something that couldn't happen. Uh, you know, fortunately, we were able to resolve the matter with uh, Father O'Boyle, and uh, uh, and they marched with us. The other was an incident with uh, um, some uh, compañeros from um, um, Redwood City um, after the uh, uh, April tent. Uh, you know, people saw that uh, you know the uh, uh, the kind of numbers that we were able to uh, to mobilize. And they came to one of our meetings uh, over at a community center on, uh, on the east side on um, White Road, I think it is. Uh, and uh, they wanted us to, uh, they wanted to convince the coalition to, uh, instead of doing something in San Jose, to uh, move our people to San Francisco. And uh, towards the end, uh, you know, there was going to be a, a fiscal fight. They left the meeting, uh, you know, echando madres uh, and things like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, we said, no, I mean, we, we're going to do our march. Let San Francisco do their own thing. And um, I think that was the right decision in the end, right? Because it would have been uh, very difficult for people to... Um, um, to drive to San Francisco or to Oakland or anywhere, you know, with the kind of um, uh, traffic uh, 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 that, uh, you know, messes that were all over the place um, because of these marches. And so um, we had difficult moments, but uh, um, I think that the, um, the coalition was um, super united uh, and uh, we were able to, um, you know, to do things um, uh, in a way that uh, um, I spoke, I think, uh, you know, very highly of um, our capacity as a community here in San Jose to organize things like this. And we weren't the only May Day March in Santa Clara County. There was one in Mountain View. There was one in Morgan Hill. There was one in Gilroy. And so different communities also have their smaller marches that they held. And I think the, our, the big, biggest controversy I remember was what will the banner say? And so, you know, we were being criminalized. So some people wanted to, I'm not, the, and I'm not a criminal. I'm like, no, that's just repeating uh, what's, what's being said about us. And so we concluded with honor the contribution, honor the contribution of immigrants, honor the contribution of workers, honor the contribution of who we are as a people. And I think that was the, the most important message that we could have put out in Silicon Valley where our workers become invisible in the new economy and so I, I thought that was that was what took us the longest to figure out I think but when we got there we were in agreement that that's what the focus was thank you 
Um, so as far as time is, we we originally scheduled to do this for, for an hour and a half and we're already about uh, 15 minutes over. But um, I, I wanted to um, maybe give a, a last chance for anyone in the in the audience if they have any questions or or, or brief comments, um, if, if there are any. If not, then uh, I think I think we'll have the four of you, you know, make make some brief closing comments, uh, if you like. I mean, the, my closing comment is, you know, repeating what Sylvia already said. That, 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 I mean, the, the struggle never ends. You know, uh, injustice, you know. Um, it's going to continue to happen. Um, injustices are all over the world, all over the place. We've seen it here in San Jose with, uh, you know, what happened uh, last year with the protest over the uh, killing of George Floyd. Um, and, uh, you know, there's um, um, this uh, systemic racism um, and abuses that, uh, you know, um, the, um, the system continues to uh, perpetrate uh, and um, Latinos and um, Black people and uh, you know everyone who does not uh, reflect the um, um, you know uh, the kind of um, um, who's not white. I mean, you know, to be um, to be honest. And uh, uh, so um, there's uh, lots and lots of work to um, you know that uh, remain to be done. But um, you know, just hearing uh, testimonies of people like Sylvia, who uh, you know um, became um, active uh, after this uh, event and continues to be active in her organization and continues to fight for justice for domestic workers, uh, you know, gives me hope. Um, seeing people like. Uh, Mario Lopez, who's uh, here with us tonight, uh, uh, was a teenager back then, and now he's, uh, you know, uh, it's become, uh, you know, a very strong leader in our community. You know, gives me hope that, uh, you know, um, that things will continue, that the struggle we con will, will continue, and um, so um, it's. I think we need to continue uh, to continue to organize these types of. Um, events uh, so uh, more young people continue to be um, impacted and, uh, and, and, and get active to, um, you know, so our struggle uh, will not die. Gracias otra vez. Thank you very much, Caso Camati, for uh, allowing this uh, showing of the film. Uh, and I'd like to thank everybody that participated, especially Sharat Lin, um, who was an excellent photographer. And actually, I, I should tell the group present here that this film was dubbed into the Turkish language and performed and was viewed and was on uh, Turkish television mm -hmm. as the, in 2000, what was it, 14 or 15, Sharat? Yes. 2014? So, so I think it was 20, 2014. 2014 at the big one of the biggest May 1st film festivals that the world has um, as I understand it um, all, all kinds of cities television theaters and so we were there in mass and in, in, um, in Turkey and uh, in the uh, um, pueblo or digamos el país de Turkey este, um, and and um, uh, Sharad had some very interesting um, experiences there, being on television. I don't know if you're going to show any of that, but any, if anybody wants to see any of that, I and Sharad have copies of that. And one of the interesting questions that that, that was on there uh, by the you know the, the uh, moderator that was interviewing in English, uh, uh, Sharad, is that uh, he was saying, well, "Well, tell me about this." Uh, uh, you know, over here in, in our part of the, the world, uh, we burn the American flag, <laughs> and we, we 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 you know we 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 drive you know dead American soldiers with their flag. Why is this immigrant movement uh, raising up the American flag? And Sharat, maybe you could answer uh, what, what the answer you gave, which was pretty good. 
and the film kind of said it too. Well, well it, it, as, as I said, so it's it's about it's about immigrants claiming that that they are part of this country, and, and right. so that that gives them, you know, a right to stay because they're American. Right. Uh, yeah, and it, yeah, exactly, and it threw them off because, and um, well, in those parts, in certain parts of the world, the American flag is an imperialist flag, and um, they see it that way all the way. So it got a little bit confusing for, um, confuso un poquito for some of the people that saw it in Turkey, but they couldn't um, deny the mass uh, images, and um, and um, I, I'd also uh, like to say that. Um, this is a weekend with a lot, you know, in terms of what Teresa was talking about, the, the Chava, the, the movement continues. Uh, la, la, la lucha para la justicia siempre continúa hasta que, and dicho de, de, de famoso es um, no, no, um, no justice, no peace, ¿verdad? Entonces, um, yo quisiera sentir más paz que eh, malas injusticias contra nuestra gente, uh, porque... You know, we, we've lived and struggled all our lives, perhaps, if we were, you know, early into the Chicano movement and everything, or, or we, you know, sparked into it just recently. But the May 1st event is on, and on the 5th of May, el Cinco de Mayo, vamos a tener, we're going to have a gathering at the Fallon Statue, and we're calling it um, Affirmative Action for the Fallon mm -hmm. statue takedown. And um, we're gonna kind of do a, I don't know if you're all familiar with uh, uh, flash mobs. They do them a lot in Europe, uh, but it's where people just kind of start appearing, start appearing, little by little, they start appearing. And um, pretty soon you have uh, something going on at the Fallon statue. And I'm trying to think up some things that will start that program and then we're gonna do a caminata to the um the Talcoat monument uh because they're interrelated in the way they uh, were negotiated to exist both uh the statue and the monument and of course may 4th is the actual uh, birth date of Quetzalcoatl, the real uh uh, priest king or uh, 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 the people from uh, este, uh, Tula, the Toltecs. Um, maybe some of you know about his historical contribution to the Valle de Mexico, but um, uh, what the person, not the philosophical or mystical or you know spiritual Quetzalcoatl, but the real Quetzalcoatl was born on uh, May 4th and uh, Seacan Quetzalcoatl was born on May 4th. So we're doing it on Cinco de Mayo, and we're actually uh, kind of trying to clarify what Cinco de Mayo is in this country, because a lot of people thinking think that Cinco de Mayo is just uh, going to have more Coronas at Chevy's um, yeah. Fresh Mex, and, and it's not Mexican Independence Day. Um, so we're going to combine the takedown of the Fallon Statue, of Day of Action, and um, a popular notion and explanation of what Cinco de Mayo is really to us Mexicanos, Mexican Chicanos. And so that's all coming up this week. And we also will be having for two weeks, the presence of Maestro Akama Pichli based at the Centro Aslan Chico Mostoc uh, for presentations and um, healings and so on and so forth. So, um, um, este, este primero de mayo, um, my desire, honestly, sincerely, is to take good care of ourselves and um, um, make the best out of honoring the 15 years of both this film and that Grand March. And, um, well, if it was a once-in-a-lifetime event, I can't think of any better kind of lifetime event for me uh, uh, you know, as an activist and cultural worker with more than 40, 50 years, even, and, um, well, um, aquí estamos, como dijimos, y no nos vamos. And um, uh, thank you very much uh, for all of your participation, everybody that came and, um, in a sense, uh, honored me 
um, uh, with your presence and viewing the, the film attentively tonight. Gracias, Caso Camati. And if you can, before you close it, if you can give Mario a chance to make an important announcement about a press conference next week, por favor. Go ahead, Mario. Go ahead. Yeah, good evening, folks. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to thank the organizers of this event and also the, the May Day March that's going to be happening next Saturday for, you know, putting this together and, and, and spending time with the community tonight. Um, my name is Mario Lopez. I am a senior policy advisor to Supervisor Otto Lee. And before that, I was also a policy aide to uh, Supervisor Cortese, who is now a representative in the state senate. Um, so I just wanted to elevate uh, one thing that came out in conversation yesterday when I met with some of the Latinx uh, com community coalition members that are trying to increase COVID-19 vaccination rates within the Latinx community in particular. And uh, Marit Maritza Maldonado, who is the executive director of Amigos, elevated to our attention that there's a press conference happening next Friday around, I forgot what time it was, um, I think it's at uh, 11 a.m. at the Mexican Heritage Plaza, which by the way, coincidentally, I'm wearing a shirt. Um, I don't know, I, I heard that there was a co-founder here, so I just wanted to elevate that too. But um, there's a press conference essentially uh, calling attention to the fact that there's been over 100 days and we yet have to see uh, an a immigration reform bill sent to President Biden, Biden for signage. And so we're really trying to um, emphasize the urgency of now and trying to get some kind of package uh, passed. And then I'll end with also indicating that Supervisor Lee introduced a board referral this past Tuesday at the Board of Supervisors meeting, asking uh, administration uh, as well as the Office of Immigration Relations to assess the different legislative proposals at the federal level that are currently being uh, considered for adoption. Uh, and to provide recommendations on how it's going to be impacting us here locally and identify uh, the type of funding that we may need in order to assist undocumented immigrant uh, you know, residents to adjust their legal status if they were to benefit from either uh, of the immigration proposals at the time. Um, and the reason for that is, as you all know, the undocumented community has been uh, in the front lines of the pandemic, and many of them had been the first uh, to also be uh, laid off. And also we don't receive any unemployment benefits or uh, eligible to receive the stimulus package uh, benefits as well. And so when you're adding you know, all of that, in addition to uh, having all of these other bills, including the accumulation of rent debt, uh, it makes it really difficult for the undocumented community to then save enough money to be able to pay for uh, the fees, you know, for the for to adjust their status, but also potentially to hire an attorney to try to uh, submit that application on their behalf. And so that's where we're really trying to come. That legal services are not a luxury; they're a part of the safety net for the undocumented community. And Chava and everyone else, thank you for your time. So that press conference is at eleven next Friday. I do want to. Uh, and with my last words, inviting you all to be part of the May Day event that we're having next Saturday at three. It starts at Roosevelt Park and we'll be marching to City Hall. And I will say that when I said we're chingones, it didn't mean me and Chava in particular. It meant us as a community and us as a people who came together to stand together and to express worker solidarity with each other. I think what the pandemic has shown us is that no one takes care of us, that no one is taken of care in the society. Um, the whole world stopped. And as workers, we had to keep working. I work now more than I've ever worked in my life. And it's ridiculous, the expectations that I get from work. And I am a privileged worker. I have benefits. I have health care. And there are many other workers that don't have that at even minimal in their lives. And so I think what COVID has reminded us of is not only immigrant contributions, which are on the front end of responding to COVID in the healthcare industry and on the bottom end of being the workers that feed us, that pick the crops, that take care of us, that run the grocery stores, that um, run the restaurants, um, but also all of us as workers. And I think that's what we have in common in Silicon Valley is that we are all workers. And only together can we protect each other 
and only in unions can we um, defend ourselves from the exploitation that takes place. I mean, if you look at what COVID has done, it has made all of us work more. There has been no pause in the work. There has been no relief for mental health. There has been no relief for self-care. And so as a nation, we have a lot to do to protect workers and even to protect people who are not workers because right now your health insurance is connected to the fact that you work and does your, work, does your job provide health insurance? And so I think COVID showed us a lot about what is missing in our nation. And I invite all of you to participate in our next May Day March to remind each other who we are and how strong we are when we come together. And also to remind the leadership of this nation, which you know thinks of us occasionally, but does not think of us all the time, that without us, there is no them. And without the working class of Silicon Valley, there is no Silicon Valley. And so we need to come together to remember that we are workers and in the diversity of Silicon Valley, workers and being workers is an identity that we share and that can construct unity and strength and force. And so it's, it's really important that we come together on that May Day to remember who we are, to see each other in our diversity, and then to see each other in all living in the same place, all being workers, all wanting a better life, all fighting for a better future. So I do invite you to be part of that and then We'll end with Silvia. Terminamos con Silvia. Quiero agradecer mucho a los organizadores, ¿verdad? Y también a um, Adrián por haber grabado estas imágenes tan eh, motivantes que ahora las necesitamos para que nuestra comunidad recuerde que, que no estamos solos, que somos unidad, que somos solidaridad y que levantando no solamente podemos alcanzar esos sueños que tenemos y esa justicia para nuestras comunidades. Gracias. Gracias a todos. Uh, thank you all for for uh, for your uh, your wonderful comments and and more importantly for for your work uh, in 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 making uh, May Day not just May Day but but the rights of, of immigrants, the rights of workers, putting these at the, at the forefront of, of our agenda. Um, and um, I will say that, that, that this year, I mean, this, the, the, the importance of the, the upcoming May Day March on, on the, the, a week from Saturday uh, is that, that we are on the, on the precipice of, of you know, some very hopeful change in the sense that you know, for the first time in, in many years, you know, there's, there, there's, there is vibrant talk uh, in, in Washington about immigration reform and comprehensive immigration reform. And I think we've got a president who who's, has the, uh, um, you know, the boldness to, to push it more than, than some other presidents have, have pushed for immigration reform. We have on the union side, the worker side, we have we have workers in Amazon, Google, who are organizing, trying to, to form unions, and and so this is a, a a hopeful you know sign of resurgence of 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 the labor movement. So I think the, these are all the opportunities that we have to work for, and and uh, uh, with this May Day march. So once again, uh, just to echo what has already been said, is that is that this is a call to for everyone to, to join the May Day March on, on Saturday, May 1st for International Workers' Day. Thank you, thank you all for, for being with us. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, Shara. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias.